Hello, Lisa here from Whole Child Learning and Wellness, and in this video we are going to look at the STNR reflex, which is part of the homologous movement pattern. So just to recap what um, this series has been covering, first we looked at the withdrawal reflex, which is the fear paralysis reflex. And then we looked at the breathing movement pattern, which incorporates the moral reflex. We looked at mouthing as a movement pattern, looking at rooting, sucking, and swallowing. Then we looked at different reflexes around the spinal movement pattern, including the tonic labyrinthine, spinal gallant, and spinal perez, and head writing. And then we looked at the um, homologous movement pattern with the Babkin reflex, and this video is going to briefly look at the STNR reflex. So just to recap the homologous movement pattern, um, my um, understanding or my learning about the homologous movement pattern, just to give some credit, is from my mentor Carol Ann Erickson and her work with the Movement Explorations courses. And again, it's the symmetrical movement with both arms or both legs at the same time. So when children are um, jumping with two feet or they're pushing with two hands or even pushing with both feet, um, that it's in both flexion and extension. Um, young children use this as they're developing as a means to build a strong grounded base for movement on all four limbs and learning to move beyond their personal space. Um, before, when we were in the spinal reflexes, we were talking about movement being initiated from the spine or the center, but now with this movement pattern, the movement is being initiated through the arms and the legs. So babies actually start this while they're in the womb as they're pushing against the uterine wall. Um, though the homologous pattern um, or through the homologous pattern, children can learn to lift themselves off the ground. Um, as the pattern develops, it supports and stimulates the development of the limbic brain, which is the emotional center of the brain. The ability to move out into space leads to development of relationships. And as the child learns to reach during this state, the um, stimulation and support of the neocortex begins. So this movement pattern establishes lateral stability and bilateral midline focus of the mouth and hands. Um, it is the first pattern of locomotion started by the arms and then the legs. It provides the opportunity to feel fully grounded and children learn to push back into the sitting position and it helps balance muscle tone on the front and the back of the body. So today we're going to look at the STNR. Um, So the STNR, which is um, short for symmetrical tonic neck reflex, this reflex emerges at about six to nine months um, of life, or when the child is about six to nine months old, and it should be integrated about nine to 11 months. This reflex helps to train visual accommodation. Um, so that's the near far vision, so as the baby rocks forward and back on all fours, the STNR causes the vision to adapt from the near to far. So this is an important, not that the other ones are not important, but this reflex is very important when it comes to school and to learning because of that accommodation. As we can see back here in this um, picture, the um, child it, you know, in school, you need to be able to um, write and then look up to the board so you can copy. So you're constantly looking up at a distance and then either copying or coming back down to write um, your thoughts. So STNR is uh, very important. Now, in this child, as we notice, if you notice um, uh, this in this picture, the child is sitting where his whole body is completely straight and his um, head is bent downward. So part of the symmetrical tonic neck reflex is where when the baby or anybody, if it's, um, if it's not integrated, when they bend their head, their legs want to straighten. 
And uh, that's what happens with the baby when they're rocking on all fours. If they're, um, let's say they're sitting on their feet and their arms are stretched out, holding them up. If you can imagine their arms are straight, they're looking up um, at a distance. And then when they look down, then um, it causes their bottom to come up and because they want to straighten out their legs. So children in school, it um, can be quite obvious if the uh, STNR is active based on just sitting posture. So let's go back here. Um, the STNR aids in the development of the midline body, uh, midline body posture with arms and legs moving symmetrically. And it helps develop precise motor coordination, binocular hearing and vision, and intentional movements. If unintegrated, um, if the STNR is unintegrated, the child can have difficulty crawling, bear walking, or hopping like a bunny. Okay, so we're in the homologous movement. They can have floppy muscle tone, um, poor standing posture, shoulders stooped, knees bent, hips flexed. Poor sitting posture, head lowering to the desk, wrapping legs around chairs um, or wrapping legs around the chair legs. So when you're sitting, they, they kind of want to wrap their feet around the legs. They prefer to sit on the floor or may sit in that W position where when they're sitting down, their feet are going out instead of underneath their bottom. They have poor hand-eye coordination, messy eating, clumsy. They can have difficulty learning to swim, especially with certain strokes that are um, uh, where both arms are moving together, and problems with that near-far vision. So if the symmetrical tonic neck reflex is unintegrated, what can be done? So there's a couple um, exercises. So the first one is um, that yoga cat and cow pose. So um, being able to look up, um, kind of sag that back a little bit. The feet need to be flat on the floor like that. They're not on their toes often. But what you're going to see is when the child is in this position, if they have a really hard time with this reflex, their whole um, uh, their whole body is going to want to be pushed forward when they're looking up because when they um, um, or when they're looking out, when they move their head, their body tends to completely shift instead of being able to main, be stable and just lift that back and kind of sink that back as they're looking up and down. And oftentimes they want to be on their um, uh, on their fists because it kind of it hurts. They say it hurts their hands, so they have weak arms, and they will tend to be on their toes instead of the toes kind of lying flat out in that direction. So just doing really nice cat poses where they're in that square tabletop position. The other exercise they can be doing is rocking on hands and knees. Um, so what you see, there's older, um, I don't know if it's an older child or if it's even an adult, um, is just mimicking what babies do. Um, babies do this um, in order to learn to crawl. So if you have a child who is 10 months old and you are concerned because he's not crawling yet, you can actually assist them in being in these different positions. So um, having their arms out, because um, hopefully by now, even if they're not crawling, they're at least sitting in this position. And then you can just take their britches and just kind of move them up. So they're in that um, picture, like the first image, right? Um, in the first one and then move them back down. So so rocking on hands and knees would be if they're going up and down, up and down. Um, if you have a baby or an older child with cerebral palsy who is not yet crawling but you know that that's kind of their next step, then you can be assisting them by helping them move up and down, up and down. And that kind of helps reflexively um, get them to start to learn to crawl. Um, and if you're doing that um, rocking on hands and knees, if you have them um, looking down um, and looking up, so when they're, when they're in that um, uh, up position, their head is down, looking kind of at their knees, and then when they're sitting, they're looking up, or they could be tracking. You can, um, you can just have uh, them track a pencil that 
goes from um, looking towards the floor and then bring it out so they're looking straight ahead as they're doing that. All right, so if you would like to know more about um, the different reflexes, the symmetrical tonic neck reflexes, um, and how to integrate them, then please join me at a Bloomberg Rhythmic Movement Training Level 1 course. You can find um, those courses online at wholechildlearningandwellness.com. Go to the courses area and um, check to see if there is an upcoming course. I teach them here locally. I'm in Lehigh, Utah. But if you have some colleagues or a group of parents who are all who are very interested in learning about how um, primitive reflexes and reflex integration, then you can just uh, send me an email, reach out to me, and um, I can go out to where you guys are so you guys don't have to come out to where I am. Also, look at our membership site at wholechildlearningandwellness.com, tab members area, so you can join and um, and have get access to um, all the back pages. There is um, information on reflexes among other things and I'm posting um, videos and new content um, as we speak. All right, so until the next video, striving to put children first.